This is Code.org, CS Discoveries, or Computer Science Discoveries course. This is unit two of that course, which is web development, focusing kind of on, well, not kind of, on HTML. I'm working on lesson seven, intellectual property and images, and we're on level two, images in HTML. So images in HTML. The image tag allows you to add images to your page. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> You might notice that this tag looks a little different than those you've seen before. Unlike the paragraph, header, or list tags, the image tag doesn't require a closing tag. But um, bum um, But it's true, it doesn't. All of the information needed to display your image is contained within the tag itself. So let's see what they mean. Image source and alternative text. In order to tell the browser which file to use, Extra information called an attribution is added to the image tag inside the brackets. The attribution SRC the, the attribute SRC stands for source. And that's critical. SRC and it stands for source. So it's just source without the vowels. I often make the mistake of spelling SRC S C R because I think, oh, it's screen. No, no, no. It's source, and it's source without the vowels. If you write it wrong, if you write SCR like I do all the time, it won't work. You have to have it perfect, and to have it perfect, you need SCR for source. Source and tells the name of the image and the attribute alt, which describes the image. So this is the photo, obviously, of what they're talking about. Let's see what these tags mean. So one, create an image tag. Create an image tag using the abbreviation IMG, check. This is considered a self-closing tag, since it doesn't need to, to wrap text as many other tags do. Yeah, so there's not going to be like a paragraph tag. You'll have a starting tag, some text, your paragraph, and then a closing tag. Same with a heading tag. You would have an H1 and then title of your page and then a closing tag because it's wrapping itself around text. This actually, an image tag isn't wrapping text, it's for an image. So that's part of the reason it has, it's a self-closing tag. The slash before the ending greater than sign is optional, but helps us remind us, helps remind us that this tag doesn't need a closing tag. I almost always include that. Um, I just like it, it looks cleaner to me. And it does help provide me that it doesn't need a closing tag, especially as I was learning HTML, it was pretty important for me to do that. All right, now let's look at this part two. The SRC attribute, which we've just been talking about, is short for source. This tells the tag which image to load. In this case, the page will look for an image with the file name dog.jpg or dog.jpg. This file name is going to be located in a box over here, which we'll see on the next page in your file menu. Right? And the file name must be exactly whatever is listed in that file box. So if when I wrote dog, I capitalized G over here, if I wrote it here with a lowercase, your file will not load. I do this all the time. I always make these mistakes. You absolutely must make sure that whatever it says over here in this box is what says here. Make sure you also have the equal side, and this always needs to be in quotes. Where were we? The page will look for an image with the file name dog.jpg in the di same directory as the page. That means in the same folder as the page. I'll show you what, mean, what we mean in a second. Image file names include extensions. By extension, they mean everything after the dot, dot, jpeg. Extensions that tell the computer which type of image they are working with. Common extensions are jpg, jpeg, 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 I think. Yeah, JPEG and JPEG, and PNG. Make sure to put quotation marks around your around your image file name. Yes, absolutely need quotations, otherwise it won't load. Then after our image tag, we have part three. Part three, the alt attribution is short for alternative text. While you won't see this text on your web page, it provides a backup in case your image doesn't load properly or for visibly impaired users. In this example, if your browser failed to load the image, you would see this. So instead of seeing the picture of the dog, right? So maybe we add a picture of a dog here. You're gonna see this. 
And so that kind of notifies the person, well, if your internet's too slow, that's what the picture, uh, it kind of tells the user what the picture would have been. It's also for people who are visually impaired, for people who have lost their vision, people who are blind, um, they often use something called a screen reader. A screen reader reads a website out loud to them so they can still use computers um, because obviously that's fairly important. And what a screen reader will do when it arrives at a picture or an image, it just reads the alt tag. It tells them that this is an image and the description of the image or the alt tag is my dog. That way they're aware of what's also on the page. So having that alt tag is critically important for both of those reasons. All right, let's keep going with our lesson.